Hey guys, today we're following up on a video from back in August when I reviewed the Wii's 48 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. The initial test of that battery yielded just 91 amp hours. Later in the video, I ran a second test after I thoroughly balanced all of the cells and that second test yielded 102 amp hours. The cells didn't really seem too terribly out of balance, so I sort of left that video a bit unsure as to why the first capacity test was so low. After posting the video, a viewer commented and said that uh, perhaps the first test was low because the cells were laying on their sides, and when I tested it the second time, the cells were standing up in the vertical orientation. Now some cells can only be used standing up, while others can be laid down on certain sides, and uh, there's a bit of uncertainty and debate as to whether they should be standing up or could be on their sides, and the only way to know for sure is to check the specifications from the manufacturer. And unfortunately, I don't have a data sheet for these cells. That said, this is a very interesting hypothesis that I thought we could test. So after reading that comment on August 25th, I laid these cells down on their sides and they sat that way for over a month. I then ran a series of capacity tests. I ran three tests with the cells on their sides. And then I ran a fourth test with the cells standing up. That first test occurred on September 29th. All right, so for this test here, my battery is connected to the same standard capacity testing setup. You can see I've got my battery and BMS, my shunt and my fuse down here. I have a 1500 watt 48 volt inverter. It's a reliable electric inverter. So this is the charger I use to charge that battery. I'm now going to take it outside and I'll use the inverter to power this charger to charge a secondary battery bank. That way I'm not wasting all of this power. And we did finish charging here. We're resting right around 56 volts. I did check all of these cells. The lowest cell is 3.49 volts. So for all intents and purposes, this is considered fully charged. And the first capacity test is running at 1.25 kilowatts, currently at 23.2 amps. We'll leave this run until the BMS for this battery shuts down our test. All right, it looks like the first test finished at 102.3 amp hours. We've completed the second charge cycle here. We are resting at 57.0 volts and this has been sitting on the charger overnight. So now we're ready for the second capacity test. And the second capacity test is in progress. All right, test number two finished at 102.18 amp hours. All right, we completed charge number three and we just stopped at 57.85 volts. And test number three is in progress. We're at 1.33 kilowatts discharge. And this will be the final test on their side. Test number three finished at 102.25 amp hours. I know it's a little bright here. We finally had some sun after about two weeks straight of rain. And the charge has completed with the batteries in the vertical orientation. And this did sit on the charger overnight. So it has been floating for a little while. I'm gonna go ahead and start the discharge test and we'll see if these results are consistent with the horizontal orientation. Same as before, we are discharging at 1.28 kilowatts or 23.84 amps at the current voltage. And this test concluded at 101.8 amp hours and that is the first and only vertical test we're going to run. After seeing the results of those capacity tests, I think we can say with certainty that the initial test from back in August was not low because of cell orientation. In fact, the difference between the lowest performing test and the highest performing test was just a half of an amp hour. One half amp hour or 500 milliamp hours. And that's good to see in more ways than one because that shows the reliability of the tests I'm performing. Now some viewers did say I should be running more than one capacity test during these reviews. And here's the deal on that. If I take 10 batteries, they could be 10 different brands or just different models, you know, just 10 unique batteries, and I capacity test them all and nine of those 10 batteries exceed the rated capacity on the first test, and one does not. I can't simply discard that one test result and run a second test because I don't like the first test. To me, that now makes the review biased, and I'm here to review these batteries in an unbiased way as much as I can. I can't say it's always 100% unbiased, but I try to be as unbiased as I can. So if one battery out of 10 tests low on the first test, I'm gonna report that. I'll most likely do a second test and I'll try to find the cause of why it was low, but I'm gonna put less emphasis on that second test result than I did on the initial test result. Especially if I manipulated the battery by doing balancing or any other form of changes before I ran that second capacity test. 
There are a lot of people that like to tell me how I should be doing my videos and how I should be doing my reviews. And I try to remain consistent in all of the tests. And if you don't like how I review the batteries, you're welcome to go make your own channel and do your own reviews, okay? Anyway, very interesting hypothesis and I really appreciate the person who left that comment and that idea. Please hit that like button before you go. Any questions or comments, you can leave those. And thanks for watching.